Now to tune this system, I'll be sending pink noise from the uh, console to the speakers. And I'll be using the measurement microphone. This is the Dayton Audio EMM1, I think. I'll be using this microphone to measure the frequency response of the speakers in the room. Hello everyone, welcome to this video where I'll be showing how to tune the audio system for a small church in East London here in the UK. This is a follow-up to the previous two videos I made where I talked about how I designed the speaker placement as well as how I made my output connection from the mixer to the DBX driver PA2 um, to the speakers and also how I configured the DBX driver PA2. If you've not seen those videos, I'll link it in the description. You can check it out after you watch this video, of course. System tuning is a very broad topic and uh, in this situation and especially for this video, I'll be simplifying it and hopefully you get some value from it. What I aim to achieve from tuning this system, I would like to divide into two. The first one is to be able to ensure even coverage in terms of um, level from front uh, to back. Uh, this is this kind of like verifying my speaker placement design and if the level difference between the front row and the back row is more than 60 dB then I know I have to maybe work on my speaker placements again just to ensure that I have even coverage across the entire audience sitting area. And then the second thing is to be able to shape the tone of the speakers to match how I want it to sound. This, if, this is even before I connect any inputs to the uh, console and start mixing or doing EQ in my input. I want to ensure that I have a very good sound coming from the speakers and whatever I'm listening to when mixing is how it's supposed to sound. Before we dive into the measuring and the tuning process, I want to give you an idea of what I'll be doing in this video. Now this uh, audio analyzer software, Open Sound Meter, you can download it for free. Um, however, there's an option to donate which I encourage that you do when you want to download it. Um, I'll be, I'm just interested in the magnitude response. You can do other things with this software, but I'm keeping this video very simple. This magnitude chart is very similar to the um, EQ graph you find in most digital mixing console. You have your air frequency from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, and then you have um, dB, level in dB. Um, we have plus or minus 18 dB here in this uh, chart. So this is what I'll call my target trace. I downloaded this from uh, Michael Curtis's website produced by mkc.com. Thank you, Michael, for making this available. Uh, this is what I'll be comparing my measurements against in terms of how I want my speakers to sound in the room. And uh, as you can see, it's not flat. I have a huge boost in my low end here, about 15 dB increase. And then from the low mid, it started coming down, became a little bit flat all the way to my high mid, drop down a little bit and then drop down at my high frequency. Now there are two reasons for why I, I kind of adopt tuning my system to this, kind of tuning it like this. The first is that the human ears perceive sounds um, differently across the different frequencies. We don't perceive sound equally in all frequencies. We are more sensitive to high frequencies than we are to low frequencies. So boosting the low frequency to some extent helps. And the second reason is that the kind of song and the kind of music that we'll be doing involves lots of kick, lots of bass guitar and um, is very, very energetic. And so this really works for most contemporary style uh, music. Um, this is not the, it's just like a, a starting point for me if I can get my trace to kind of follow this, my target trace, my measurement to follow this target trace, then I know it's a good point for me to start. After everything, I listen, play something, a music I'm very familiar with, and I listen, then start making some little EQ adjustments on the output just to make sure it sounds as good as I want it to sound. And at least by doing that, I, I ensure that my system is, is well-tuned and when I'm mixing the individual inputs that I'm connecting to my mixer, everything sounds good and I'm confident of my mix. So let's jump towards collecting some data. Now, this is the first measurement I got from placing the uh, measurement microphone just here in front, around where the first set of uh, seats would be. And uh, what I have here, the red is my target trace, and this is what I've measured. Yeah, definitely it wouldn't be as smooth as the target trace because um, sound reflects off of walls and things like that. And I'm a little bit okay with the way it tracks, just, yeah, I have... Um, some mid frequency I have to deal with here. The first thing I'm noticing is the fact that the uh, drive rack PA2 really does a good job in um, taking out most of the low end. The high pass fit I put for the subwoofer here at 30, about 32 or 35 hertz 
really seem to work very fine and I'm okay with that. Uh, however, I might have to still bump up my... Let me clean this up a little bit and make the graph a little bit smoother. And um, let me take it to three. Yeah, so I might have to increase this kind of just like an average. I might have to increase the subwoofer just to have more low end. I'm not happy with this. And yeah, probably use EQ to work on this and work on this just to get it um, a little bit close. So let me fix the subwoofer and then fix some EQ situations. Okay, just by increasing the volume of the subwoofer, I can see now I have more low end. I'm okay with it just going a little bit above is fine. And then, um, so this lemon or lime or whatever the color is, is my new measurement. After increasing the subwoofer, this was what I had before. I only increased the subwoofer so the mid and the high frequencies detract uh, with, it was consistent with the previous measurement. And uh, yeah, so what I will do now is to move my microphone before I even attempt EQ. I'll probably move this mic towards the left side to see if I have um, something um, the same. And then I'll move this mic to the middle where I'm standing right now, around here where the console is, and then maybe check how it sounds behind as well. And so we'll have four traces, one in front, one at the left side, one in the middle, and one at the back. So let me get all four of those measurements. All right, so there's the uh, measurement we have. The red is my target trace and this um, green or lemon is the one, the first measurement I had front right. Um, I've not smoothing out the measurement. This is how it came. And then front left, this is what I had in my front left, which is kind of similar in terms of, if I smooth it, uh, let me smooth it a little bit. Now, um, this is what I have front right, um, green, front left, orange. I don't know whether it's the colors are probably okay. So this one is the front right, um, the one I measured putting my mic here. And then the front left is where I put my mic somewhere around here. And uh, that's the front left is the orange. So I think I'm pretty happy with how both of them are quite consistent in tonal qualities. And when I came to the middle of the room, uh, let me take out the front right. Now the, oh, take a front left. So this is the middle of the room and this, the low frequency, I think they are, I'm happy with them, but I started dropping off at the high, mid and high frequency. So this is the front and then this is the middle of the room. So I think I have about, uh, almost about 3 dB of difference here at the highs and the mid frequency, which is kind of like expected. It's, it's not much. And then when I go to the back trace, I have another about 3 dB drop off. So from front to back, I have, I have about 6 dB drop off. Yeah, I have about 6 dB. I'm quite okay with that. It's, it's surprising, but yeah, it does what I expected it to do. Uh, I might still need the speaker here and then probably drop it even less than 6 dB. I don't know, but for now, I'm, I'm quite okay with what I have here in my trace. What I have to fix now is um, using EQ, putting EQ in the output um, as the matrix I'm sending to the stage box, putting EQ just to try and bring this as close as possible to my target trace. So let me just do that and we'll see the result. So this is without EQ and this is with EQ. I think there's so much we can do anyway, but with EQ, this is fine. And uh, without the EQ, this is it. So in the before and after trace you just saw, the after, that's the tuned trace, was achieved using the EQ, parametric and graphic EQ present in the output bus I was sending to the speaker. I used the matrix sense, so that's what I used. And uh, the idea was to get it as close to the... Um, target trace as was possible and that's not the end. The end is to play uh, some music that I was familiar with and that also matches the style of music that will be done in the church. And then I listen to the speakers trying to make some minor adjustment just for it to sound as best as I felt it, it could sound. So that's the idea and it sounded really good and yeah, it was, it was great. Uh, if you have anything specific you want me to talk about in this whole tuning process, just let me know in the comment section. And I would like you to also check out the two previous videos to give you an idea of the entire process from system design to the tuning process. You can see those videos right here. Thank you very much for sticking around till the end. I'm Kelvin. I'll see you in the next one.